Welcome to the first assembly video for the C3DT slash C cantilever printer. In this video we are going to put together the power unit so even though this is for the printer specifically this will actually apply to any printer you want to build or uh, even any power unit you want to put together. The parts that we're looking at, I have the PSU, which is the universal power unit, a switching unit. This is the case that goes along with the C3DT printer. I have a more universal copy that you can download online. I'll have the link below. I'm using a rocker switch, light rocker switch, that actually has a fuse in it. So that's this switch here I bought it on Amazon. Um, and what we kind of want to achieve here is the problem with these PSU units is that the wires are exposed. It has like a little clip on here, but that does not really protect anything. So when you put together a printer or even when you buy one of the cheap printers, you will find that the 110 volts or if you're in Europe, the, the 220 volt wires will actually be exposed, not safe. So what we're going to do here is we're going to enclose this in this case specifically for the, uh, the printer that we're making. We're going to put a rocker switch on it uh, with a cable that we can attach. And then once this is done, we have a power unit that will work for this printer, but basically you know, any printer that you want to use. So PSU cover, we have the rocker switch. I'm using 16 gauge wire, red, black, live wire, neutral, and then a ground wire. And make sure that everything is grounded properly. The tools that I'm using for this setup is uh, not a lot. A wire clipper, a crimper to actually uh, crimp on the little clips. So these are the, uh, the clips that fit on this switch. You could theoretically solder this. It gets a little messy around the plastic, but you know that's an option. And then to connect the actual wires with these little fork connectors to the the actual PSU. Do not just wind up your wire and put it in the PSU, it's not safe. Do not solder your ends of the wire and put them in there because they will get loose after a while as well. The best way to go is with these fork switches or even better yet, a full circle connector that where you will actually have to remove the screw and then push it in. But So that's what we're going to use for this setup. Okay, as far as the wiring is concerned, um, I, I put a diagram, uh, let's see, up here on the screen, uh, and you can kind of correlate it to uh, this switch here, but uh, what you'll find is that, um, so the inputs are uh, simple, and it's, it's kind of indicated on here. Uh, this would be the ground, this is neutral, this is live, and the other reason you know that this is live is because it actually bridges over the uh, circuit breaker that's in there so so that's where like you know if, if you get a short circuit the live wire has to be uh, properly cut now if you look at the diagram closely you'll find that the output for the rocker switch on this side here are the ones that are the furthest apart and as you can see in the image on the screen the rocker is reversed so I'm gonna have to, you know, for this wire, and I've, I tried to get this out. There's like, there are like little clips in here, I think, where you can loosen it up, but I'm having trouble with that. So I'm gonna leave it as is and wire it accordingly. So ground wire goes on ground, and that will go straight to the actual PSU. The live wire right here, and if we look at the diagram, so the live wire is this one here. On the diagram, it actually goes over here, like close, and that's not the case because we're going to reverse this one around. So if we reverse it around, the closest one would be this one here. Okay, so we're going to get a little weird bridging going on here. And then the neutral wire goes from here. To here and then coming out of course life to life and neutral 
to neutral over here. Let me take a break here for a sec. The way this case was built, I actually have little inserts where you can put square nuts in there, the same inside here, so that when you attach the screws, it actually will pull it tight. So you're not screwing into the plastic itself, you're actually screwing into a little nut, so therefore you're going to get a very tight fit. These two top screws are actually meant for the, the, the 3D printer case. So if you print out a universal version of this cap, you know, these two holes will not be there, but uh, these four will. So before I actually insert anything, I am going to insert the nuts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little hot glue once the nuts are in there to keep those nuts in place. Hot glue with my drop a little. Dab a glue on here and on there because those two have a tendency to slide out. These other four screws are pretty tight in place, they're not going anywhere. All right, so this goes into the case as follows. Once I've got it hooked up to the PSU, I will actually you know whether the power coming out is proper or not. So we can actually do that as we speak. What I will do is I will connect, and I'm not going to screw anything in yet, so in case I screwed up, we can fix it again. So we're going to add the neutral to neutral here. The So ground neutral life. So I'm going to put the neutral in, and finally the live wire over here. Okay, <clears throat> so now at this point we should be able to plug this in, and when I turn the this in screen, so I want to turn it on. Now we're getting power to the PSU, so we've got everything properly connected. All right, so I'm going to turn this off again, disconnect the wire. Don't really want to be messing with that too much. So we can assemble the connector here. These can be 16 or 14. 14 millimeters will actually work. It grabs the square nut in there. Uh, if you want to make sure that you reach it, go for the 16. But again, 14 millimeters will work here. All right. So there's that. Now we still have to take care of the output from the PSU. So that would be the 12 volt coming out. And there are multiple rails on here, so we will be using the plus and the minus here for the output. I am simply going to, uh, and the wires will basically go from here, and the, the actual controller board will sit on top here, so I don't need super long wires. Or how, or you know, we'll look in the structure how we're actually going to connect it in the board. Um, normally, I would put a ferrule on here, um, but I know there's very limited space within the board itself, so I might have to get a little creative. There's there's limited room in the actual container that controls the controller board, so I don't want to, you know, get myself in tight corners where I can't get out. So I'm gonna figure that out later. Okay, so the plus is on this side, minus on this side, so we're going to add the plus out here on the most, most outer rail. I should probably get a better screwdriver for this. And that corresponds to this. Okay. All right, let's turn this off disconnect. So everything we've done at this point is really just generally for any power cover that you can use.
as you can see I kind of went too long with the wires here so they're going to get scrunched up in there which is fine but now in this case we're going to slide it on to the unit and I left a little space up the top here for the wires to be able to come out and, and this is now this is specific to the the C3DTC printer so uh, I'm going to add this little clip. This little clip here is what is partially what holds together the the PSU to the actual Y axis. That's why I'm going to add it to it. These are M4 M4 bolts that fit the universal. So let's. Now the reason we're using this universal power unit is because the actual screw holes are all in the same position no matter what brand you buy. Unless you buy a really really crappy brand that does not stick to the universal configuration. But uh, I have not yet found a PSU that did not use these screw holes. All right. I got this. What I do know is that some of these PSUs the metal they use is like a soft aluminum, so don't try to over tighten like this screw is actually not really gripping very well, but it's enough to keep the case in place. And then the last one goes on this side here. There's the hole. Because this being soft metal is a bad thing, but it's also a good thing because if you're a little misaligned, it'll just bend to your will. All right, so now we have the completed PSU for the C3D D slash C. Now I have a on uh, GrabCat. I have a more generic version of this, and I'll put it on Thingiverse too, so that. You can use it on your other printers. What happens there is instead of like the wires coming out through the top here, which is specific to the C3DTC, there'll be a, a hole here uh, that will actually where you can have the wires come out. Uh, you know, three pairs if you need them to be. All right, so that was the construction of the power unit that will form the basis of the C3DT slash C3D printer. All right, if you want to help me out, please subscribe and give me a like on this video or even a dislike um, if, you, if you don't like it. Um, if you really want to help me out, go over to my Patreon site and support me there. And I will keep this going. Enjoy building. And once you're ready, feel free to move on to the next assembly video in the series for putting together the C3DT slash C cantilever printer. Thank you and bye.